Hello everyone, I'm Ultima Mantoid, and I wanted to welcome you to Let's Play G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero. Yeah, why am I playing this? Um, G.I. Joe Retaliation comes out in like six days, seven days, something like that. Anyways, it's supposed to come out on the 28th. So, I thought, this is something I've wanted to do for a while, I thought I would play the original NES G.I. Joe to kind of celebrate. Yeah, I grew up with G.I. Joe. It's a big thing for me. You know, I owned, like, tons and tons of action figures, and I read the comic books growing up. Like, it, it's big for me, you know? So I, I thought I would play the game. Now, what it does, you know, play the game for, you know, celebrate the movie coming out. Of course, as you can see from the intro, it shows you the cast of playable characters. You get... Five characters, Duke, Blizzard, Snake Eyes, Captain Gridiron, and Rock and Roll. And it shows the weapon type, you know, like, for Captain Gridiron, the football grenade launcher, and, you know, it just, it's basically a, uh, you know, it's, it tells you what kind of gun that they carry, and then it tells you what their hand-to-hand -hand specialty is. Like, with Snake Eyes, it says Katana specialty. Anyway. Everybody else... Oh, and Blizzard has a dagger. Everybody else is a front punch. So we're going to begin with General Hawk talking. Good morning, men. The time has come to rid the world of the Cobra organization. For too many years, this group of thugs has terrorized the innocent people of the world, and it's time to act. We have some good information on the location of the main Cobra bases, and we feel that soon we will, all, we will be able to locate the secret base where Cobra Commander is hiding. This mission will be an attack on the jungle base deep in the Amazon. Duke, you'll be the leader of this mission. Please select your team. Yo, Joe. So, what it does is each one of these characters will actually have their own mission throughout the game. You get to pick two side team members. Um, I'm going to pick Snake Eyes, because Snake Eyes is the motherfucker. He was my favorite, Joe. And, uh... We're going to go ahead and pick Rock and Roll and get him built up early. There's a reason he has the most powerful weapon. Yeah, each character has, like, their own stats. See? Like, uh, his stamina is 10, which means, you know, his health isn't that great. But he has the best jump in the game. Well, yeah, for now he has the best jump in the game. Spoiler. Anyway, um... He's, you know, got like a, a me mediocre punch, and his, his weapon strength is very low. Like, weapon as in, like, gun. Yeah, punch is, is the melee, and weapon is the gun. So, I mean, each character's stats are different. Like, Rock and Roll's health is just pathetic, but he makes up for it in raw weapon power. Anyway, we're going to pick Snake Eyes, and we're going to pick Rock and Roll to start out with. So, we're going straight into the Amazon, first of all. And I always thought Duke kind of looked silly in this game. Like, he's, it looks like he's got, like, this Jay Leno chin in his sprite. So, it's pretty basic. It's a uh, platformer, obviously. You got the punch, and with select, you can change to your gun. You can look up and fire, and you can jump and aim down. You can crouch as well. Gun power up! You uh, collect enough of those. If you see, it goes to level 1B. And of course, that's ammo that's bouncing away. Not like I needed that or anything. This is one reason you want snake eyes. Da ha! And I love how it like changes to the portraits. Duke's. Just, I've always thought Duke looked derpy in this in his like portrait image. And yes, I know way too much about GI Joe. Just that ration um, is how you get health. Also, you want to look for tons of hidden power ups in this game. Fucking boars. <laughs> Fuck off. I'll turn you into bacon. But yeah, uh, the rations will give you two points of health back. No, get. Damn it! Now, one important thing is if you run low on ammo, you can always switch to Snake Eyes. Notice that his weapon doesn't run down. Ever. 
And notice that he's actually like, it looks like he's firing a Hadouken. Or Hadouken, whatever. Yeah, he uses ninja magic. He's the only character in the game that doesn't actually consume ammo. That thing that I picked up that was up there... I think it's called a chevron? But, um... What it does is it increases your max health by one point. You can have three maximum per character. Now that I've covered the basics of this game... Um... We actually get a boss fight in every stage. In this stage, it is the Cobra Condor... Cobra Condor Z25. What made this uh, particular jet so unique, it was piloted by, I think it was, um, Arrow Viper. Oh, and if you switch to uh, handheld combat and you hold up, you get to throw grenades. Yes, I'm going to punch the jet thing. That was what made it unique. Anytime um, it was being used... Uh, let's not get hit by this thing again. By again, I mean, you know, another time, obviously. But the Cobra Condor Z-25, uh, it would separate into two different planes. The cockpit of... Or like, the first cockpit and the one in the front would actually face forward and the cockpit for the back would actually face towards the back. Of course you get to see the stage boss every like at the end of every stage and he will have something witty to say. This is Range Viper. So Joe, you think you're pretty tough? Well, I'm waiting. Now, this is uh, the second level. This is the bomb level as it's called. What you have to do is, in each bomb level, it's this, it's always the second one. Um, you have to find these checkpoints, or these check marks, and you have to set bombs there. They usually give you enough, um, enough time to get what you need to. And of course, like I said, you know, as you pick up more guns, like more gun uh, power-ups, you can easily, you know, destroy things. Basically, it's like, oh, MG, super duper power weapon. Lols, I am carrying the BFG, and I totally forgot this doesn't hurt you. I forget why. That body armor, it provides you invulnerability for a temporary, like, amount of time. And if you brought Snake Eyes along in this one, you can easily get up. Oh, wait, that's right. I think it was the fact that you have to... Oh, fuck. There we go. There's an easier way to do that, I just... See, you have to collect four weapons in order to power up your gun. Like I said, I can talk about, you know, the mechanics behind this game all fucking day. And see how he's got four rings now? Final rank of your gun is always four. We don't want to touch that checkpoint yet. I'll come back to it. See the chevron up there? Pick it up. And Duke now has, like, a ton of health. Duke ends up with the most health in the game, I believe. And see, it even leaves a little bomb when you, like, touch them. The, the checkpoints, I mean. Not the... Not the enemies. You don't want to touch the enemies, because they hurt. It's kind of standard in... Okay, now that water hurts. So, I don't get it. Anyways, we've been everywhere in this level, so we're going to touch the second uh, bomb point. And as soon as you walk up to the door, we get our second boss, which is Raptor. Who carries a falcon. He used to be an accountant before um, Cobra actually found him on one of their, like, ranches. See how bad his jump is? 
compared to Snake Eyes. Yeah, Snake Eyes jumps really high. He's a fucking ninja. I would hope he would, you know. But Raptor, he he started out with this love of birds. That tells you, by the way, how much time you have to complete the third mission. Based on how much, like, the bomb says. Uh, on, and, oh, by the way, Raptor can't actually fly. Um, but he started out as, for, as a former accountant. He actually died uh, because Cobra Commander stuffed him in a landlocked freighter in a volcano. Yeah, it, it was pretty brutal. Anyway, um, Range Viper says, You defeated my forces, but I won't be so easy. It's unusual that Range Viper is the boss of the first set of levels because of the fact that he's... It's a Viper type, um... Get up there, Duke. You know what? Fine. Snake Eyes, you can do it. There we go. But the fact that he's just a generic, like, Viper type, uh... You know... Here we have um, the Battlecopter, which was introduced in... So that's the funny thing, is that some of these things weren't released when the game were, I think. Or at least they were re-released afterwards. But the Battlecopter, yeah, it gives you your own health bar, so... Anyways, the Battlecopter ended up coming with uh, four uh, different figures. It was like a, uh, sort of... Oh, I'm at max level. That's what max level looks like. And no, I don't know who half the enemies in these levels are, but I do know who the bosses are, and that's the important thing. Range Viper! He is actually, um, as his name actually implies, and yes, he's all over the damn place, He's very familiar with, um, just, I guess the easiest way to define him is, like, Viet Cong impersonalized in a Cobra Viper. Um, they're trained to, basically, wilderness combat and, like, how to survive out in anywhere. I mean, they, they're trained on how to, like, to make, um, like, houses out of, like, mud and straw and stuff like that. So, but that's, that's G.I. Joe. That's the first, uh, the first stage, I guess. Or first world, whatever you want to call it. But after you defeat the main boss of each section, you get a password. And it's not one of these ridiculously long passwords. It's only nine letters. Not that terrible. You, you're, com you know, greeted with that uh, mission complete thing. So, with that, I believe I'm going to end the episode. We'll pick it up here, and I'll just read uh, what Hawk has to say in the next part. I'm Ultima Mantoid, and this is Let's Play G.I. Joe. Till next time, take care, and have fun.